In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this little snow scene with some sparkling snow, which I am using for my Christmas cards. So I'll show you how I made this card. I found this stamp at Hobby Lobby. I was looking for a house, and I just love to see winter scenes on Christmas cards. Well, this is a log cabin, and so that's okay. I guess it could represent my house. I do live in the forest, and it has a cute little deer in it. So I said, okay, that, that'll probably work. Because I wanted it to be a snowy scene, I did not want to use black ink. I used a gray, so it's soft. And then I used a very light blue, soft sky, and a roller to roll on some sky. So that is, it's, it's not a lot of color, but it's just enough color to put a little bit of a sky color and to get a smooth effect. That will also help to make the snow look whiter. Then I want to put a little bit of color on the trees. I don't want the trees to be dark. Again, to keep it a snowy picture, I just need a little bit of color. So I'm using some very subtle tones. The markers I'm using are Mint Macaroon and Pierre Pizzazz. So I put one color on and I just kind of dab it on just a little bit. This color is slightly darker. I just kind of dab it on. This looks like a leaf tree. So I just do tiny little dots, try not to get it on the snow. This is a pine tree. This color has a little bit more blue in it. You don't have to cut the stamp print so awfully careful. Just kind of dab it. Some tree trunks. These are double-sided markers. So I can, this is the fat side and this is the skinny side. I'm going to use the skinny side. And we'll just put in a little bit of tree trunks. Sometimes there's a little branch sticking out. There's a few places the trunk gets a little bit bigger as it comes down. And there's this other tree off to the side here. And I like to add a few little extra branches on. Just give it a little bit more character. Okay, the trees are done. I'm going to use the same color for the little fence. And I'm I'm also going to use this color for the little deer, so he's got a little better contrast, so he'll stand out against the white snow. I don't actually have a brown. I have very limited colors, but the color brown is actually a mix of colors. I'm going to sort of use combinations of these colors. Well, the yellow is really just for the window. A window there in the door, and a window over here. And that's all I need the yellow for. I'll start with a lighter color and I'll use the brush side. And I'm just gonna put some streaks in here. I'm not coloring it in solid. It's okay if some of the lines are not con completely connected because it is a log cabin. See, it looks kind of golden right now. So let's add a little bit of this uh, watermelon wonder. Any, any kind of orange will work. Very gently, I'm not pressing hard. I'm just sort of making lines because it is a log cabin. See, now it looks a little bit browner. I'll use this dark color and I'll use the skinny side. Again, just draw lines. I think I want to make a little bit more shadow on the left side because there's going to be more shadow on the eave there. And I just want to make some thin lines. I'm doing this very loose light, not doing continuous lines. Just, I'm just sort of streaking it on. I'm going to add just a little touch of red just to make it look a little warmer. Just sort of patching it now for my door. I'm going to use my darkest color to frame the door. This is not black. It might have the effect of being black, but the color is actually fresh fig. It's in the brown fig. Okay, now our chimney. The chimney should have some color on it, and that's a little bit too red, so let me just add a little bit of this kind of orange color. That's all with markers. Now I'm going to use a color pencil, a very soft blue, and with a very light touch, I add a little bit of shadows in the snow. Just a little bit. Oh yes, don't forget the roof. I need to have some shadows on the side of the roof. Okay, that's all the color we need. Now for the glitter. Because I'm making several cards to do my Christmas cards, I do four on a sheet at a time. So I stamp my image into four places and then I kind of work on them systematically. Okay. 
Now I'm ready to start putting the glitter on. Try not to put too much glue on. Um, put a little bit and then just kind of spread. Then I'm gonna take my finger and just sort of spread it a little bit so it's not a big thick lump, so it's a thin layer. And then we'll pour our snow, our glitter snow plate. to knock off the glitter, our little snow scene. So since I'm working on a full sheet, I'm gonna dump my glitter glue in there. I'm gonna take my jar, open it up, sit it on the plate, and we'll just kind of fold this like this and make a way to dump it in. You won't get all of it, and you'll always have some glitter that will wind up everywhere. That's why when I do my glittering, I tried to do all of it at once. Now, I can try to sweep this up. You see, look at how much mist. I've tried different ways. I even tried a pouring jar with a spout. But the glitter, somehow it sticks. I will have to clean up my desk when I'm done with the glittering. I try to get most of it in. There's always going to be some glitter stuck to the container or dish that you work from. <laughs> That's the thing about glitter. You never get it all cleaned up. I got most of it. You will lose some. Par for the course. I'll have to wash my brush, my plate, and my table, and my hands. It's now I'm all sparked. Time to cut up our pieces. I don't need all of that. I'm not being exact about the cutting of this because I am going to be putting another paper behind it. I just need to make sure that the square is big enough to fully cover underneath my circle. The circle cut out. Okay, it's time to glue. So I did up a bunch of cards this way. I'm gonna make sure it's gonna fit good, that we don't have coming over the fold for the glue we go close around the circle and then we know that it's square shape so a little bit like that and then I like to place it like this so I can get my scene straight I want the fence and the edge of the circle I want the deer and it's part of the tree will be cut off how we get that in our little frame. Now previously, I had cut out all of my Merry Christmases. When we put Christmas on, we don't want to hide the deer. Move it over like this, so, and remember that there's going to be a dot on the eye for Christmas. And this will overlap the scene a little bit. And they're a bit of a pain to glue on. It's a lot of detail. You have to put the glue on the back. Try not to get too much glue on the front of it because then it takes off the shininess of the, uh, the, the, the metallic look. When I put the glue on, I try to put it on just a little tiny dots. Try not to put a big, large glob. If you do get any big globs, just kind of brush it. But try not to get your gluey hands. Okay, I do have a little bit of glue on top. I'll show you how I'll deal with that. I use a brush. Try to remove a little bit of this glue that's on top. Try not to mess up everything. My brush is only slightly wet and I keep wiping it on a rag because I, I don't like the way this glue messes up the wonderful shininess of the paper. It cleans it up pretty good. Make sure it's all stuck down. Now I need 
to get my, my dot for the eye, which I have in a little bag where I cut out all of them. I have my little dot for the eye, and I'm using a pin to hold it. And a little dot of glue where that's going to go. Just a dot. And then I can place it now the eye is dotted. So it says, Merry Christmas. I like the shiny stuff. I like the glitter and gold. Now I just have to finish the inside of the card. I just need to put a card inside the message. If you, you don't have to have two messages in another card. And then the card will be done. Now I used, for these little things, I actually used typing paper. I did not use cardstock because it's already got one, two layers, and then there will be a third layer of cardstock inside. So I didn't want to have four thick layers, plus the, the words on top, that would be a fifth layer. So I thought I would do just regular typing paper, so it's much thinner paper, that's why the markers show up on the back side. <clears throat> and besides, it's going to be sandwiched in between everything so you don't see it. And that's how I make my Christmas cards.